Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. We had spoken about the Antioch. So yes, I talked about the experiences at Antioch. And how Barnabas preaches there for Antioch calls for Paul. And then Paul goes to Antioch. And then Paul starts to preach the gospel and starts to teach the doctrines of Christ, his message, and his great. And the scriptures tell us that the synagogues were filled. He started to speak and speak and speak until the synagogues were what? Were full. And we see that there were two factions of people, those that were blessed by the message of Paul and the men that stirred up envy because of what was happening in the life of Paul and Barnabas. The liberating message they preached to the Gentiles. And how I preached and I showed you by the scriptures that Paul and Barnabas never preached the law to the Gentiles. Because they had the understanding that the law was not given to the Gentiles but the Jews. Salvation was to all that believe. The law came before salvation. You see where I'm coming from? Salvation was to all that believe. Any man that believes. For the Bible says, for him that believes. For there is neither Jew nor Gentile. In Christ there is neither slave nor free. There's male or female. For anybody that believes, the Bible says it gives you the right. So salvation by Jesus Christ, the shed of his blood and the resurrection, propitiation, redemption, um, and now justification, glorification. The whole line of Jesus Christ that is given to us comes after the law. You get where I'm coming from? So the law existed before the salvation in Christ by his body. Shed blood at the cross at Calvary. Do you agree to that level? Do we agree? So, Paul gave the example and the experience of how that he had seen the Gentiles come to Christ and living a life of the gospel without the law. That's why he says in Romans, Now how be it if those that are Gentiles that know not the law do the things of the law according to their nature, and you who know the law fail. So Paul is giving an experience, he's saying, even if a man doesn't know the Ten Commandments, if that man knows Christ, the law will work inside of them. The Ten will be fulfilled in them. That's why Jesus now tells you, and now all the other laws are done with, and now he leaves you only one law, love. You understand? But many people look at the instruction, commandment, love the brethren, without understanding the person love himself. God is love. So when he says love, for I leave you one law, love, understand God. Love will come out, naturally. Understand the love of God. God has not called us to serve love as a law. He has called us to serve love as a relationship. There's a difference. He's not saying that, do this, do this, do this, I'll bless you and anoint you. He's saying, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, and I've done that. Can you respond to it? I'll establish you. You see, the Bible says, to whom he predestinated, he also what? He called. To whom he called, he what? Huh? To whom he justified? He glorified. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The predestination called you. The call justified you. The justification glorified you. Do you know that the literal translation of Doxazo is honoring you? He honored you. He honored you. Now you stand before God honored. Okay. Simpler lines of honor. He respects you. Imagine. <laughs> Shouldn't I humble you? Should that humble you enough? Hallelujah. But he tells them, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So Paul gives you an example, and if you understand, that's why I shared when I told him. Romans book was written way later 
It was written way later. Hallelujah. Way later. He had seen a life of men he had preached the gospel to. And he realized that he could give them not the law but Christ. For when I was among you, Paul says, I sought to know nothing save Christ dead and resurrected. That's what he sought. He didn't seek anything. He didn't seek to tell you who Moses was, who... No, no, no. He sought for one thing. To tell you Christ dead and resurrected. Period. And while he did that to the Gentiles, the scriptures tell you, the Gentiles start to respond to the message. They respond to the message. And because there was a nature of identity in Christ formed in them, they started to do things by nature. The things that are contained in the law, they're not being taught the law. You understand where I'm coming from? That's why the Bible tells you, and this is an allegory of two things. For there is a woman that was born on Mount Sinai, and she is Hagar, representing the law. And he speaks of the other woman which was born at Jerusalem, which is free, and a woman that produces the child of the promise. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, let me open your eyes to something, some of you. Many Christians don't know the true battle in the church. They don't know the true battle in the church. They are ignorant of the true battle in church. These things you're calling persecution, the battle in the church of Christ, whatever is outside is not a battle to a Christian. Let me answer that. Whatever is outside is not a battle to a Christian. The battle to the Christian is inside. Those things that you see that are like a battle, they are not a battle to a Christian. You understand where I'm coming from? They are not a battle to a Christian. Those things you see outside are not the real battle. The real battle is inside. I'll tell you why. The Bible says, you go back to the book of Genesis. It says that these people having one language, there is nothing that they will think that shall be impossible with them. Why is the church failing? The church is failing because we don't have one language. It's very simple. The church is failing because we don't have one language. You look at men who didn't have God. He had still set a principle in the earth. But if truly, even if they don't have God, the moment they have a language, they can do anything. Anything. And the Lord said, one, two, three, go. Genesis 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is, and they all have one, and this they begin to, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God is saying if you can take them to a point where they all have one language, the places of even prayer shift to imagination. Let the man imagine. Let him just imagine. That even goes beyond what you're doing on prayer mountain for God to appraise you. Okay? I'm talking about the experience where you go to God and just imagine something and the Lord does it. He says when they are one, they are one language. There is nothing they imagine. Nothing. That means the places of creativity begin from their mind. That the moment it sits in the mind for instruction or illumination, it is a done deal. They don't even need to struggle about it. They don't even need to pray about it. They don't even need to fast about it. They just think it and it's there. But look at the church of Christ today. Look at how wasted the church of Christ is. Look at how Christians are. Look at how ministries are. Look at the personal individual Christian who has prayed for things for 30 years, for 10 years, for 15 years, for 5 years, and they've still failed to get something. Yet there are men without Jesus Christ and without a relationship with God and they imagine something and it is so. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Look at the Christian who has been fighting devils all their life. They don't know any other life to live except fighting devils. They're just fighting devils and fighting devils and fighting devils and fighting devils and fighting devils. 
They are in deliverance every day. They are casting out devils. They are casting out devils. They are casting out devils. They are breaking their brothers' fingers, cousins' things. Witchcraft is all around them. They all look bewitched. They look abandoned. They look resented. They look rejected. They look disadvantaged. They look out of line, out of formula, out of method, out of multiplication. They look just Christian things that are saying, God, I wish you come. I'm dying. You understand? Christians are even committing suicide. Christians are even lost faith in God. Some of them even still question themselves, does God exist? Ministers have given up. Why? Because we don't have one language. We don't have one speech. One church is saying, you have devils. Another church is saying, you don't have devils. One church is saying, you are blessed. Another church is saying, we are in blessed. One church is saying, you are increasing. Another church is saying, you are increasing. One church is saying, you are big. Another church tells you, you are small. Another church tells you, you are dark skin. Another church tells you, you are pink skin. Another church tells you, you are dense. Another church tells you, you are wise. Another church tells you, you are married. Another church tells you, you are not married. Another church tells you, it's, the language is not the same. You see where I'm coming from? Yesterday, I was in a meeting, met a bunch of ministers, and these guys have a feeling they've been led by the Holy Spirit to start revival. I did not carry somebody intentionally. I intended not to carry someone. Because the Spirit of God told me, first go and understand the minds of these men. So I sat around men who are believing God for revival. 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 And I found a man, they've been in a church for like four years. They have like 15 members for four years. And he's standing in front of the pulpit. He's criticizing other ministries. In my head I thought, brother, why don't you first fix your thing? Your car is too broken down. You're criticizing other men how not to drive broken down cars. If you've never driven a car, how can you teach me how to drive a car? If you've never operated a computer, how can you start a computer school and teach computer? What computer are you teaching? Do you understand where I'm coming from? You've tried something for years, it has failed, and you're teaching other men how to do it. And then you reach people, and then you realize they have to fix themselves. You see, there is one delusion that I've seen people have. Many people think, huh? they think that the church of Christ has fallen. In fact, you hear them say, ha, kanisa ya mokama ya gwa, kanisa ya mokama ya chama, kanisa ya yesu, the church of Christ fell. It, the church of, let me tell you something, the church of Christ has never failed. Amen. This the Spirit of God told me. He told me, my church can't, you see, Listen, you must understand the person. That's why men who say that are just ignorant. Listen, the person of Christ is incorruptible. If Christ is incorruptible, how can, you see, let's go back to the concept. He is the head and you are the body. When you say that the church of Christ has gotten spoiled, what does that mean? Christ's body has gotten spoiled. He has only remained with the head. If you say, oh, the church of Christ is perverse, you're meaning his body is perverse. The church of Christ loves money, you're meaning Christ's body loves money. No. No, no, no. The Spirit of God told me very clearly. There are two churches. There's a church built by Christ and there's a church built by men. The churches built by men are failing. But the church of Christ has never failed. Has never failed. He says, on this rock shall I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said, the gates can't. They shall not. They shall not. So when you say they have, you're actually saying he lied. Do you understand where I'm coming from? The church of Christ has never fallen. They only don't know this. Like the Bible says, like Elijah thought that he was the only prophet in Israel. He comes and then he runs and says, oh, Jezebel is on my case. They're going to kill me. Help me. I'm this only guy. You know, I've seen those Christians who think they're the only righteous people. They're the only church Christian. The whole church has fallen. They are clean. They are consecrated. They are set apart. Everyone is dirty. Hey. 
For them they are preparing for the coming of God. Their churches are tiny. They are too there. Oh, come. Yeah. And the Bible says, but there is a remnant of grace. It is there. That remnant, you didn't wake up in the morning. You see, and the Bible says, he has still preserved himself a people. That means there are people who are consistently established in the gospel entirely by grace. If he says he has preserved themselves, you see, and that's why many Christians misunderstand this. Many Christians think they preserve themselves. No, he has kept himself. There are people who are kept. That's why when he's speaking to Peter, he says, I'm speaking to the brethren who have been kept by the power of God and to salvation. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God of our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to to his abandoned mercy has begotten us again and to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Next line. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Next line. Two are kept for you. Who are kept by the power of God, not your works. By the power of God, not your prayers. By the power of God, not your fasting. By the power of God, not your separations. By the power of God, through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. They are kept. There are people who are kept. That their standing is in Christ. He applies power and force to resolve them. That's why the Bible says, for the zeal of the Lord. Read it again. For the zeal of the Lord shall perform it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 11. Romans 11. Let's begin with the first verse. I'm addressing those people who don't understand the church of Christ. Okay? What does it say? One, two, three, go. He says, I say then, had God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Next line. God has not read, cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture says of Elias, or Elias, or Elijah? Don't you remember what Elijah thought? You know, I've been around men who say, oh, he's a church. You know, like I heard a certain prophet saying, I said, no, 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 no. I might be ignorant of many things, but I'm not ignorant of that. God can't prophesy contrary to the scriptures. That's what I demand. Why can't God prophesy contrary to the scriptures? Not that he can't. But that pastor has a thought like Elias. They think like Elijah. But when they are in the car. Let's continue. The Lord, he says, they have killed your prophets. And they've dug down thine altars. I'm left alone. I'm the only minister. I'm the only apostle. Oh, I'm the oh. I'm the only apostle. There is nobody else in there. <laughs> Some guys are funny, yeah? Don't that they? And they say, I'm the only one. But never have a canister young, you come on see and to put this on Namakama Yanda get canisters on Namakanisa and I got seed in a canister. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. Nagamba chitangi. Ngama kanisa gari mkabla. Na yes, mwe gari. Na yes, sili na kanisa. Let me answer you. Next verse. But what says the answer of God unto him? What did God answer him? He says, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal 
I have some people who have never hey, I myself have preserved there are people who have been kept wewe abantu ngate basa bate basi babali tabamanyi tebali babi bali ko nabali we bachonga they don't know why but they don't just resort them they didn't keep a clean slate of report they were not the most prayerful they were proud arrogant and controlled out of order out of line but they in charge the lord preserved them himself listen i got tired of doing things my own i want to enter a life of being preserved by god they i'm sure of my salvation i am sure of my salvation if i know i'm a remnant next line what does the next line say even so at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace next line and this by grace then it is no more otherwise grace is no more grace but if it be of works then it is no more grace otherwise work is no more work work grace they're different give me the message version of that from the fifth verse one two three go it is the same today there is a fiercely loyal minority still not many perhaps but probably more than you think next slide they are holding on not because of what they think they are going to get out of it but because they are convinced of god's grace and purpose in choosing them if they were only thinking of their own immediate self interest they would have left long ago neba cha chirimu akiba manyinti te bachikola acha chikola mobo this is Paul's mind this is Paul's mind do you see how Paul thinks do you see how Paul thinks now i want to submit to you the church of christ has never fallen the churches you see fallen are not churches of christ they were built by men they were built by men the church of christ is built by christ the church of men is built by men if a man should be in the church of christ he should be built by christ and the ministry itself built by christ but if christ is not building unless the lord watches over his city the bible says the watchman watches in vain so when paul tells you i am not of them that beat the air like one who should run his race in vain he's saying the thing that he's doing in his life is of christ working in him for it is christ that worketh in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure at the point where i'm so dispensed in him working his purposes completely in me completely in me that at the end of the day men will look at you and say jesus did it yes we have you call it hallelujah 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 now let's go back to the allegory a bit and i show you something galatians chapter 4 let me show you the true battle of the church verse 22 says for it is written that abraham had two sons the one by a bone maid and the other by a free woman okay next line but he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh but he of the free woman was born by the promise next line which things are on a memory for these two are the covenants the two covenants he wants to show you the two covenants the one from mount sinai which gendereth to bondage which is hagar give me the amplified version of this particular verse 24. uh-huh now this is an allegory it's all an allegory tell anybody it's all an allegory uh-huh these two women represent the two covenants one covenant originated from mount sinai what was the covenant that originated from mount sinai answer me what was the covenant that originated from sinai the ten commandments it tells you that one covenant is originated from mount sinai where the law was given you see that where the law was given and it bears fusion destined for slavery everybody under the covenant of sinai will always have a spirit of slavery in them their lives their businesses 
their associates, their relationships, their family, their ministry, everything around you. If it is bust under Hagar, you have a slavery spirit. So when you see the spirit of slavery in church, when you see the spirit of slavery in Christians, understand me, any Christian you see with the spirit of slavery is under Hagar. God has not called us to be slaves. Why? Because we are royalty. And I'm not talking about royalty by faith. No, it must be royalty. Manifest. Are we together? Are we together? Next line. Now, Agar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and she corresponds to and belongs in the same category with the present Jerusalem, comma, for she is in bondage together with her children. That means Hagar is in bondage together with her children too, to Jerusalem. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. That Hagar is in bondage with her children to the children of Jerusalem. Are we together? Next line. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Which is the mother? Which is the mother? Which is the mother? Next line. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, that thou travelest not, for the desolate has many more children than she which has an husband. Next line. Now, we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise, not of the law. You're the children of the promise, not of the law. Next line. For, but as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. That means there has been a continuous battle from the beginning, continues now up to the end. Let me show you the epic battle, the real battle of church. Let me take some time to show you the real battle of church. Nevertheless, next verse, Paul says, Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? For you to know which side you are. Cast out the born woman and her son. What does a born woman represent? Is that so hard? Do you know when you tell some Christians that bring the law out of church and preach Christ and his grace, they sell your cult? Because you don't know how many religions in the world are attached to Judaism and to the letter of the seventh creed. Moses, the chief apostle, no wiser man shall come after him until Christ comes because they don't believe Christ is in flesh. That's the seventh creed of Judaism. They say, I believe with a perfect faith that the prophecies of Moses, our master, may he rest in peace, were true that he was the father and the chief of all wise men that lived before him or ever shall live after him. Judaism does not believe that there is any other mind after Moses. So, he can only teach Moses. He can never go beyond Moses. If you don't preach Moses, you're called. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why Moses says something. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14. But their minds, their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away with Christ? 15. But even unto this day, Makati, when Moses is read, the veil is a veil of the heart. So anytime you read Moses, blindness hits them. Blindness hits them. Up to today, they are blind. Now, for example, if Paul tells you that I was once alive without the law, okay? But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. I will ask you the question. How did sin grow in the body of Paul. Do you know that men don't preach those scriptures? Because they are blind. That's why ministries are dying. 
That's why churches are failing. You read. He says, one, two, three, go. Romans 7, 9. He says, for I was alive without the law once. So is it possible for a man to live without the law? Yes. It's very possible. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Who knows the meaning of reviving? Revival. So if you want to bring the revival of sin in church, what do you do? Why is that so hard for men to understand? Go back to Moses. Listen, we are not called to minister to men the law. We were called to minister to them who did not sin. That's Christ. Because by the law, the Bible says, no flesh shall be justified. Nobody can be justified by the law. Nobody can be justified by the law. Not even one. That's why he tells you, unless your righteousness supersedes the righteousness of the Pharisees, yet Pharisees concerning the law, they were blameless. He still tells you it's not even righteous to fulfill all the Ten Commandments. You need a more righteousness than that. Let me ask you, how will God come for a church without spot or wrinkle? How can a church be without spot or wrinkle? Except by grace. Except by his grace working in them to have no spot and no wrinkle. Some of you have tried it already. You've realized you can't. It's only by his grace that a church cannot have a spot or wrinkle. Now, why don't you preach what should make the church spotless? Why are you preaching judgments? Judgments will never precede instruction. That is why the book of Judges comes after instructors. Moses and Joshua. Judges were not meant to precede instruction. Instruction was supposed to come that the man would be instructed in all righteousness. That when the judgments come, judgments find the man instructed to stand. God does not will that men should perish. Try to understand this. Some people think God has left a loose line on the earth again. Be mm-hmm. anachikola ngadi, atachikole yamani. Anani wa mm-hmm. Kuna mali nde wali. Kuna nakola judge. Some people think God is in judgment. They're waiting like this. Eh? You do something and then he says, he gets his pen and writes. There are two books. You are knowing him. He gets the rubber out of the book of life. He writes your name in the book of death. He waits for you. You do one thing in church which is good. He says, yes. Well, well, he comes back in the book of life and writes. Then after that you do something bad. Before he even reaches the pen, he says, Michael Sangula Sangula. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, he writes in capital letters. Underline. You go in the presence and cry. He says, It's cool now on his and you. Put them. Listen, your salvation is eternal. God, listen. Now, some people don't read the Bible. How can you say that nonsense when you know scriptures that say, He that began a good work shall see it? God is not looking in writing change. No, no, no. He is seeing it. You understand? He shall perfect that which concerns you. He then stay up there. He comes near you and tells you, Not on God that way. Do this and do that. He works. He's not up there rubbing off and rubbing you. No. He began a good work. You're his workmanship. How can he fail? Oh, how can he fail? Oh, how can he fail? He never fails. He never fails. Listen, I am sure I will go to heaven. Christ works in me and he can't fail. 
He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He began your faith. Listen, that's why I told people, I never went to God and told him, call me Bambi, no, 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 no. He saw me as I was and said, man, Chris, I love you. Now I understand. People sing those songs in the world, they don't understand. While you are yet a sinner, Christ died. He saw you in whatever state you were. He said, no. No. This one is my work. I love them anyway. Some of you, that's why if you want to get out of the law very quickly, understand how God started his relationship with you. You just understand how he started. No. 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 You came with your uncle of God. The Bible says, come as you are. <laughs> Woo! Come as you are. That's why I tell women, marry men who know the grace of God. Don't marry legal guys. Because you'll grow fat and the guy says, ah, nakuwa sorry munene. Nakuwa sorry munene. Nakuwa sorry munene. I know of a man who left his wife for wait. I know. Me, Grace Rubega. He just told the woman, he just, 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 he Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because this is love unconditional. I don't need you to do anything for me to love you. Jesus, I love you anyway. Amen. Husbands, love your wives. So I'm to take it. Even as Christ has loved a child, she doesn't need to do something. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not Jesus looking to see you perfecting yourself. You know, where to kuze, where to Listen, Banange, God. God, what will I ever do for you? You have you seen people who have done too much to even come to church? Not even to be able to church them church. Not even church. You come waiting for a big stone. You're praying, but you're waiting any time. There's a time I entered church and I thought, oh, God is going to kill me that day. Then to long and means that service here got us sick. God is going to kill me that day. Then to long and means that service here got us sick. Because let me tell you, we were too judged, we were too condemned. Oh, now I know his love. Now he tells me, come boldly, come boldly, come boldly at the throne of grace, knowing that you will receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. Now I come bold. I come bold. Regardless, I come bold. 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 That's why let me tell you something. There are people who will never function consistent in the Holy Spirit because of one thing. Every time they go in the presence of God, they don't expect His grace. They expect a line of judgment. They expect a line of criticism. They expect a certain line. They will never come in the presence of God. They will never come in the presence of God confident that they are going to obtain grace. There is a consistency that comes with the presence of God that has functioned with a man over his life and you see it consistent. When you see that consistency, understand that man understood he has never gone with his sufficiency to the presence. He always went simply relying on Christ. Totally relying on Christ. Do you get where I'm coming from? Totally relying on Christ. 
totally. Because the only reason that we stand in the presence and we know we can't fall or fail in the presence begins from the true apprehension of why and how did he anoint me in the first place. Your anointings, or the anointings you'll ever walk with in this life, will never be because you fasted on Mount Everest. Fasting helps you, it doesn't move God. So, there are men who fast, there are men who pray, I fast, I pray, but I don't pray to get anointed, I pray to stir up that gift which is in me. Why? Because when the Bible says you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works, for which you are preordained, before the foundations of the world, that you might walk in them. In fact, the word preordained is anointed. You were anointed before even the foundations of the world, that you might walk in the anointing. Now, did you fast fast? Did you fast pray? For we are, one, two, three, go. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and to good works, which God has ordained before, or that has before ordained, that we should walk in them. He ordained everything, preordained. He anointed, he pre-anointed. Before you even came to this earth, he worked to put this anointing inside you. Now when you came on the earth, you came anointed. Before you were even born again, you were anointed. You had just not given it access. So when you came in Christ Jesus, you gave it access. What did you do to deserve it? Nothing. Sheer grace. That's why you look at men who put conditions for the anointing. They are not consistent in the anointing. No man who teaches conditions in the anointing is consistent in the anointing. Watch all of those men. They are not consistent. They are not consistent. They have occasions. You understand where I'm coming from? But you, when you understand this message, you're going to realize the anointing will never leave you. He says, the anointing that abides in you shall abide with you forever. After that, Listen, let's read the Bible. First John, chapter 2. First John, chapter 2. Let's just confirm this, okay? Let us not read from men who are anointed. No, you read the Bible. What does it say? 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth. Eh? Wait. What does the word abide mean? Uh -uh. Give me the amplified. One, two, three, go. Read. That's for you, the anointing. That is. The second appointment, the anxious which you received of him, abides permanently in you. Does the anointing leave a man because he's told? Never, but to miss her. Why won't ministries fail? What's up, I'm coming to get a mafta. Bumper! I'm using a mafta again. I know you're a little bit of a child. I'm 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 a little bit of The giftings and callings of God are without repentance. He doesn't repent. He doesn't change his mind about it. Let me tell you. The problem with some people is they don't understand that love believes all things. Because love believes all things. Even with your record life. He still believed you're the only one who could carry that anointing. Some people should understand this. Even in your rotten, he still believed. He gets a man he knows who loves money. One day he will even sell him. He gets that particular man and tells him, uh -uh. even though this guy is a faithful, for you in your steering attitude, go ahead and That's why they're men. But yeah, but we're going to be in the middle of the 
کوزه مونه چمو بریم بیا ما کوزه رو اینطوری که یه دانسینگ زاد ان نوت رایت با گنز مونه رو نبریم با با بیا سنت با کوزه رو اینطوری که یه دانس کریزی استینگ زون دی پولپیت اف کریست بات دی استیل ان نوینت بیکوز هی جاست این زن او با دی فیل می با من یه یا با او For him, he did what? He gave. He gave. Try to understand it. He gave. Now, if you don't go to grow what he has given you, and then you make it your ministry to criticize how men are not using what he gave you. <laughs> You're so funny. How can you stand and start to criticize a man of how he's not doing what he must do instead of you doing what God has anointed you to do? What did he ordain you to do? What is your ordination? What is the anointing upon your life? You separated you. Who established you? When he was calling you, what did he tell you? Kwa waelea itatawari hiyo. Mind your own business. Tonangire ya mukamba. You don't know what he told him. But now you're coming like as though when he was calling naye wachirimu. Watae sana ko. Jamaa muongera. That's why some men die. That's why they die and their ministries fail. Tulamanyi wa koma. Listen, you were not there. You don't know what the two of them talked. You don't know whether when the man went to God and told him, "Man, I have this weakness." Tomanya mukama ya mugamba yentimanyi weeri na ye. Era God gwenja galoko. Tomanya. Tomanya. Brethren, even you, you were not of noble birth. You were not wise. Rokwa mwera bi deje mufa mwali na bubi nyo But I don't understand a man who criticizes someone who wants lay the hand on him I don't I don't You can say it's wrong to criticize men outside and that's okay That's really wrong What about the man who laid the hand on you Na twewe yamba ya kuyamba na twewe yamba Your life and your kid who abuses his spirit because he's drunk He laughs. He forgets there was a point when this boy couldn't walk and the father had to hold him and tell him harm walk. Kush walk. Shame walk. And now the father is drunk. He's exposing him. Ah, ha ha ha. Dad is drunk. Come and see. Ha 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 ha. And the two guys cover. And no one cusses Kanda. He cusses Kanda. He cusses Kanda. Never be involved in this politics of Vasumba or church politics. Ever. Some of you are going to go and build very big ministries. But when you hear politics, you stop preaching God, Christ dead and resurrected. It is not our mandate. Teri mukama kwa yaita. Kutereza uwe. Enyamwe itira ali mutereza. Sikwa ya mulokola. Sikwa ya mufuka kama futa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the anointing, that sacred appointment, the unction which you have received from him abides permanently in you. So, then you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But as his anointing, are you hearing me? Teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood. So you must abide in him, live in him, never depart from him. You are the only one who can depart from the anointing. He can never depart from you. So the one who can say, I no longer want you. He can never say that. He's not corruptible. He says, being rooted in him, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. The ministry of the anointing is to teach you to abide in him. Every day. It's not to teach you to go away. It's not to teach you to push you away. He teaches you to come close. That's why I told you, you cannot understand the grace message and the anointing on your life does not be consistent. It doesn't be consistent. It must be consistent. Any time 
you'll be able and ready to demonstrate. You won't have more occasions. I'll let us see you later. Or I'll let us have a demo. You ha. Now, sing that Joe was there. Ah, over Rudy, sing that what you are. Sing that what you are standing and saying about what the name of 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 Mine is permanent, le abiding. Wherever you are, you will permanently abide with the anointing. You will be sufficient enough to function in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me show you something to understand the real battle that we are fighting here. Acts chapter 13, verse 43 to 50. What does it say? Very quickly. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Are you reading? Next line. The next Sabbath, they came almost the whole city together to hear the word, but when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They contradicted and blasphemed everything that he what? He spoke. Who were they? Were they the Gentiles? Wasn't he speaking to Gentiles? So Paul is speaking to Gentiles, and what do the Jews do? They contradict him. Acts 17, verse 13. 17, verse 13. 1, 2, 3, go. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the people. Who else is attacking Paul? Who again is attacking Paul? The Jews in Judea and at Berea. The Bereans are fairer. They are reading to know whether these things are so. There are men in Thessalonica. They have heard that it's in Berea. They got their fuel, their plane tickets, and went to attack who? Paul. Acts 23, verse 12. One, two, three, go. And then it was day. Certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would never eat nor drink till they killed Paul. Who again is against Paul? The Jews. Acts 25 verse 7. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Who again is attacking Paul? Have you ever asked yourself why Paul never had a battle with the Gentiles? Do you realize that even the beatings Paul received were of his fellow men? Now, do you realize it's the same content and character that persuaded your Lord? And so when Paul speaks this wisdom in a mystery, he said, had they known this wisdom, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, to show you the true battle in church and submission, one, I want you to understand there is only one particular group that pursues Paul, the Jews. He never had any complaints or false teaching accusations in the Gentiles. Number two, the same attacked your Lord and Master. Number three, they were in the church. They were not outside the church. They were not outside the church. Now, when God tells you the allegory of two covenants, one of Mount Sinai that gender is two, bondage and the other one of Jerusalem which is above and free. I want to commit to you that Mount Sinai is not the Arabian Muslims only. They are Christians in the same spirit in the body of Christ. Like the way you hear Arab spring, the word spring there is Sharia. Right? So it is with the Christians. The foundation of Islam is on Moses. But do you realize that there are Christians who are also established on Moses? The only difference is they don't pray five times a day. You go to the Muslim line. What's the difference? 
What's the difference? Do you know that there are people who sit and the moment you listen to them, there is no difference between them and the Roman Catholic faith and the Abalokoli also. Same thing. Because they've not understood the message. They are blinded every time Moses is read. They only know one thing, to open the veil off. And how? By going back to the law. For them they think the veil leaves, yet they become more blind. Remember when Paul goes to Antioch and starts to preach the grace message. Do you realize that it was 14 years before his first journey? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Let me show you something. He says, It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. That means he had certain revelation experiences. Next line. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago where in the body I cannot tell. Do you realize that Corinthians were written in 57 AD? If you back chart 57 AD, you go to about 43 AD, 44, 43 AD. And if you look at 44, 43 AD, you realize that according to the scriptures, Paul was still preaching the message of his grace in Antioch. When the Christians were called Christians, for there was much teaching. He had an experience of the spiritual lines of God amidst the grace message. Not the law. You realize that when Paul was a lawyer, he never had spiritual experiences until the experience of the conversion, 37 AD, while he's going to persecute the guys at Damascus. That was the only time he's converted. Now in this instance, he says, I know of a man in Christ about 14 years ago who are in the body, or oh, I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows it. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Next line. Uh -huh. How that he was caught up in paradise and had unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for man to utter. Of such an one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but of my infirmities. Why does Paul have those spiritual experiences? In the dispensation when he has met the grace gospel after his separations in the lines of Arabia. Why not before, while still at Damascus, when Ananias had opened up his eyes? Because every vision and dream shall come by grace. And I tell people, when Paul tells you, if I have a vision to glory, I have many. I tell people, I don't share my visions. I share a few for the benefit of the body. But if I should tell you everything I see, some of us will amaze you very much. And I'm not boasting. I'm not boasting. But the only difference with us is we saw beyond those visions. And we saw ministration. Not the boasting in the visions. I saw those prophets stand and say, Last night the Lord told me, uh, la, 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 la. And at the end of the day, it was just a man being exalted above a line that should have left to his personal conviction to keep that mind and wisdom in God. Except if it is for the edification of the saints, don't share it. You get where I'm coming from? Now she's a prophet. She sees Elizabeth in her line and then she prophesies to her line because it's profiting Elizabeth. But how can I glory in things that won't profit anybody? Now, the reason as to why the Jews attack Paul is very simple. The Jews were full and established of the law. And Paul has started to preach anything without the law. That is why in Galatians he tells you, I think it's five. If I yet preach circumcision, why am I yet persecuted? He asked them a question. If you still think I'm preaching circumcision, why am I still persecuted? There was a persecution line on Paul because he refused to preach works of men. Because circumcision is done by men. The Bible says that God is not building a temple made by human hands. He is not seeking that a man's flesh will share in his glory of edifying you. Now for Baba Burira, we are only giving you the man who will work in you. We are not the ones who work in you. It is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he's seeking for only one thing. That he will circumcise men himself. Without the hand of a man. 
That's why he says, if I yet preach circumcision, why am I yet still persecuted? I mean, how can you sit and then start to falsely accuse Paul? Never more get any idea you get there. You see where I'm coming from? Now, at that point, you don't say, I am innocent. No, don't try to be innocent. Just preach. Just preach more. Because that means you're making a statement. And I mean, I told people, if you ever preach and you're not criticized, man, you wagwa. Probably leader. You see, let me tell you. Many ministries now are companies limited by shares. And what they do is bust more parent companies to sit under their underlying companies. That for you to be something in this nation, you must belong to a certain institution. Not that necessarily you agree with them in everything, but you need to belong somewhere. And their politics are on radio, belong to this one. But let me tell you, Christ is not the author of division. But Baloko are more divided than anything I know. Why? Why? What is wrong with Christians? Where is love? Do you know that the top-notch men in our nation can even spend a year without talking to each other? The fathers of our nation. Everyone is competing. Baba Deva Mika. Ayare Sevans. Ayare Ah. One time somebody doing witchcraft reported us to somewhere in the municipal council. We are shouting. Pastors testified against us. Pastors. They sided with the witch doctor. He said, oh no, we. Who organized our one? I said, hey. <laughs> This is where I'm coming from. Now, I prophesied this about four years ago. Five, I saw the biggest division in the body of Christ. And it's going to come because of this one thing. Men are going to understand the message of Paul. Yes, understand the message of Paul. You're going to see the biggest division in the body of Christ. You're going to see the biggest division in the body of Christ. Because many men don't understand Paul's message. They don't understand it. That is why Romans 3 8 tells you, they slander us and reported and assume that we tell men to do evil. Paul, he must have had something different. Now, Hagar is not in Arabia only. Hagar is in the body. They are in church. They are Christian men who are only wired in Hagar. But the letter killeth. The Bible says the Baruweta, the letter killeth. Why are you still killing men? And then I compared ourselves with this ministry and the men who preach the law every day. And I realized that our people were more established in character than legal men. I realized that our people here are more straight than the other guys. Those guys are having higher rates of falling in their ministries. Why? Because they don't understand that the gospel is giving life to men, not killing men. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Paul... At the end of the day, when he starts to make statements as there is a righteousness of God without the law, there is a man who can't understand how you can be righteous without the law. That's it again. He can't understand how you can be righteous without the law. But Paul says it. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So when Paul says there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who not walk after? the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the life giving spirit had set them free that they can be a law that sets men free without works they can't believe that Paul can say that if it is of faith it is not of works and if it is of grace it is no more of works if grace is of works then it is no more grace and if works is of works then it is no more works Listen, he's telling you very simply grace and works are two different things believe in God he will work in you Right believing leads to right living. Simple principle. Now Paul tells you, if you want to get a man who is a thief, to get him out of stealing, impute righteousness on him before he walks right. This is how we used to pray. Did you stop? Did you? But they can't walk out. So the principle is simple. How did Abraham receive the blessing of righteousness? Was it before 
circumcision or after circumcision. The scriptures say he received righteousness before circumcision. One, two, three, go. Cometh his blessedness upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also. He's asking. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Next line. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? The Bible says, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. God reckoned righteousness of Abraham while he was yet uncircumcised. And next line, and next line. And he received the sign of circumcision as a seal, listen, very strong, of righteousness, of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised. Remove, remove circumcised and put steering. Eh? He received the sign of not steering, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had while he was yet a thief. Are you telling David? So, the mind of God finds a man stealing and he tells him, You're not a thief. The men in the Lord say, Orimubi. This one, they're telling him, Don't steal. When you tell a thief that you're not a thief, he will automatically repent. You don't need to tell him repent because you're changing mindset. The true Greek word there for repentance is change of mind. Change of mind. So he comes in a thief and you tell him, you're not a thief. I'm not. I'm not. He tries to believe he's not. He tries to believe repentance automatically takes place where truth is. Where truth is. But this is too hard for some men. Why? They're saying, the, the sin has become stronger than Christ in church. Sin has become stronger than Christ in church. Today, men preach sin more than Christ. They show the power of sin. Where stronger? How can you spend the whole year? Hate me, 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 hate me. For us, we are preaching. Yes, 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 yes. Hello, call. Era when Asumra Ayimus Aruani Achu Saru. Yes, ah, there is a difference. Give people Christ. Tell you never give people Christ. Now, if the church continues to walk in the law. Trust me, in a few years, you will see the church so aligned to Sharia. If today pastors can take fellow pastors to courts of law, if today a man of God can stand on pulpit to harm his own brother and sister. We had relatives who were thieves, but we never handed them over to police. Not because what they did was right, but we loved them. But this blood ought to have spoken more than the blood of Cain and Abel. Today men are put in conferences against fellow Christians. And you have never even heard the man you're criticizing speak. You don't even know him. How can you criticize a man whose lines you've never walked in? Oh, I wish some men could have walked only one mile in some men's shoes. They have known better. But today in the guise of loving God so much, some men have fed the true line of Sharia and the true distinctions of the law in the body of Christ. Have seen men they call the bazukufu. Supposing that girl dies from outside. Who will God ask us for those people? How does Paul say I'm not accountable of any man's blood? How can you chase a person? I know a church member here. They belong to a church where when they checked and then they would realize that someone was not a person, they used to put glue on their private parts in Uganda and the Christian church ministry. How can they put glue on private parts of little kids? But that's how the church has become. That's how little the church has become. Our own Christians are more deadly than disease itself. Pastors can't even trust other pastors anymore. 
How often do they call each other to find out how are you? No, I can't associate with that man. He's gay. I can't associate with that man. He's a thief. I can't associate with that pastor. He's this. Where is love? Where is love? That's why I tell people, let's preach the grace. For us, let's preach the grace. Raise your hands and speak to Jesus. Sorry I preached for so long, it is true. If you're hungry, I'm sorry. The word is food also. raise your hands and just pray for the church pray for the body of Christ for pray for the brethren in Egypt pray for the brethren being persecuted by the law in Kenya pray for those men that have left behind their families then because they lost their blood to this gospel pray for those that shall come after that don't know this truth. Pray for our president. Pray for our nation. Oh. God will pray for Uganda. May God uphold thee. May God uphold thee, Uganda. Lord, let our trust be in you and you only. We pray for our president that you continue to increase him that you continue to work in him. We pray for our parliament. We pray for the institutions. We pray for the non-governmental organizations. That you will prosper them. That they will walk in truth. That they will walk in your word. We pray for Kenya. That you might deliver them. That you might help them. That you might bail them out. We pray for Egypt and all those other lands. For those places where Christians are haunted where Christians are killed, where Christians shed blood every day, where persecutions are. God, we pray that you'll strengthen them. We pray that you'll embolden them. We pray that you'll raise more laborers in this gospel. We also pray that you'll open the eyes of men who up to this day read Moses, that they will see Christ than the power of his resurrection that they might see the exceedingly greatness the riches of his glory the abundance of his grace the power that worketh in them that which he wrought in the resurrection that Christ will be the beginning and the end that he will be the author and the finisher that like the law came by Moses that grace and truth shall reign by Christ that you will imprint knowledge that will imprint revelation in Christianity. That our Christians will grow. That they shall have a wisdom. And that this wisdom shall present glory.
Like Paul said, I commit you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I pray that the grace of God will establish you, that the grace of God will increase you, that the grace of God will strengthen you, that amid his persecution, you will stand bold as soldier of the Lord, that amid his trials and temptations, even when your brothers despise and forsake you, that you stay true to the gospel and that name by which you were called, that you will never fail, that you will never falter, that you will stand a testimony of men who without the law by nature did the things of the law, that you will be established, that you will be increased, that you will be multiplied, that you will walk in love, among them that are without, that you'll forgive your brethren, that you'll never backbite Christians, that you'll never fight each other, but that you'll love each other. In Jesus' name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at Compala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.